educated director of cruise red isro centers in fact one phd guy came and told me how come only a person with a bachelor degree sitting on the chair of bikram sarawai and i said that is fact and in the course of my journey i was more like a river i was quite an impromptu person so changed and what many people told me you are doing a grave mistake but again i changed and got into a newer and newer things so that's why i thought to change the title you can go back and change the beginning but you can start from where you are and then change the ending and that has been my motto I studied in two Ramakrishna Mission schools. What is great thing about that? In one school had a 25 percent orphans, and another school had a 25 percent blind students. And you have to be have one orphan or one blind student as your roommate, and that teaches you that the life when you build a team, everybody need not be excellent. You can still build a team. who are deficient in something or some part of life and i was fortunate to study in you know the jnu of kolkata or jnu is the jadavpur university of delhi it is a very politically active and intellectually active and with a bright professors and what i understood and if i look back there those days actually the curriculum gives you knowledge but your personality building comes from human interaction and the colleges in human interaction not in labs because when you meet in adda or chai ka dukan then you don't have a difference and you argue and counter argue you learn the power of putting your views in a more logical and acceptable fashion and that is where the personality is built and and you know and you get this learning subsequently and just since it's a, a lot of hr professionals gathered i just let you know that uh, i was for 10 years the question setter of isro and i chaired the recruitment board and i chaired the whole recruitment process as also for 3 years and uh, i can take small credit of isro success in recent years because we have chosen the right people because our choice of people were never on the whether they give the right answer but our choice was based on whether they are giving going through a right approach that was the question in fact i will tell you that uh, just at the beginning started this that uh, i have established a radar company with a motto we will build the better than the best radars in the world we are not a second grader people but we will make the better than the best and and it will be coming from india and our selection of people based on not on graduation degree but on the grasping power so i have selected for radar engineer architecture student mathematician physicist electronics engineer and even a media specialist because i found his grasping power was superior than any other thing and my because of my long experience i can detect whether the person can grasp a very totally unknown things because in the days of artificial intelligence the real intelligence is actually becoming rarer and rarer and that is where we have to tap now you know i actually i was to no i was in kharagpur iit i was actually not a very bad student i had an all india rank of 82 in iit i was in kharagpur iit but i thought to becoming mathematician so i left it 
I came to, then my father said, you will spend your life being a math, primary school teacher. So he forced me to go to Jadavpur University. And because I stood a joint entrance rank of first, so they gave me what branch you want. My, my father said electronics, so I became electronics engineer. But, and when I actually, I didn't want to join ISRO because it was the, one of the, that time ISRO was not known that much. And it was the lowest paid job of three jobs I had. One was uh, Jensen Nicholson to become executive assistant to Arun Nehru. Second was Hindustan Computer Limited. And the, the, the lowest salary was a 650 rupees basic of ISRO, engineer SB. And I have to want to buy tickets for Bangalore. Actually, I was to, supposed to join the School of Automation after the GATE exam in IIC. But for some reason or another, you know, I bought the ticket of Ahmedabad instead of Bangalore, and I happened to become a space scientist. And, you know, that's a, but that time, you know, the ISRO was very snooty, not to, like two days. ISRO was snooty because there has to be people, you know, top equivalent was MIT, Stanford, Caltech, then lower down, there used to have been IIT students for that uh, MTech students, mostly PhD or BTech. And non-IIT BTechs were the least. In fact, I was the lonely fellow there. And there was no taker. You know, there was a very two prestigious jobs, INSAT and uh, IRS. There was a new budget, the big buildings and everything. And there was starting a small department called a you know, there hardly any funding, that is for radar remote sensing. And uh, they pushed me there because I was an odd man out, pushed me. And the group was stopped with a lot of odd men, you know, union leaders, people who did not go well with other departments. And, and it's an education for me, the team which was built with people who did not fit the system, they became the most proliferative innovators of ISRO. And they built today the most complex electronics ever built in India. I think no, none of the, it is not IITs, IISC or anybody. It is that teams of leftover people who made it. So my, uh, we are given a job, you know. Uh, even the Nachiketa, has asked his father, Uddala, why are you donating the cows who don't have the teeth? They're already old. So when we went, because this is an odd man out, so we were given a Marconi radar from Indian Navy, which was not working, obviously. Had it been working, they would not have given to us. And they told, you repair it and fly it. And into my boss was NS Pillai. Then we, and we repaired it, flown it. We are very excited, you know, from a, flying on a DC-3 at a height of 10,000 feet without any pressurization. And we are getting images of approximately three to five kilometers and with a resolution of 150 to 250 meters and come back and, you know, the bosses is to tell us, see, what is this, this IRS image? gives you 23 meter resolution from 840 kilometer height. Look at it, what is the difference? You cannot, uh, this will not go. So then we built, we are the fifth country in the world to build synthetic aperture radar. And to be precise, in India till today, in my 30 years of career, 37 plus career, and nobody else could build a synthetic aperture radar in India. It is supposed to be one of the topmost radar. In fact, it is, if you know synthetic aperture radar, all other radars are sub, a subsets. And it's a heavy computation intensive. It's a, it needs a signal processing and all. We built airborne <laughs> radars, and we are the, actually the fifth people in the country. We're flying in Beechcraft. And 
most interesting is the first radar we built, you know. Actually, that data processing used to be done by the, some other set of people. And, uh, and the motion compensation was not correct. And for some reason or another, hardly one-tenth of the data used to be good one. In fact, while collecting data, we have to pray. Today, the data should come good. <laughs> because the, And I was hawking RISA to the top management. And you know, top management like a chairman, Rangan and all. And they are always surrounded with a, advisors with a pins in their hand. They will prick anybody who comes very near, comes with a new ideas. So there are these fellows who are pricking, the big man people, that they see these fellows could not process a good airborne radar images and they want to go for a space bond sir. And you know, it was a, my existential dilemma. In fact, a, finally I actually we were not, because we were supposed to be hardware guys, you know, not Bolt and all those things, instrument, but uh, not computers, you know, we are not worth the computers. So we had no facilities. And I talked to the CMC general manager in Ahmedabad, Apte Sahab. I said, he just brought for demonstration some eight CPU Xeon machine. I requested him to donate me to for a year, for a month. Then after a month he came to ask for it, I told, you see, I told him the Kishore Kumar story, you know, somebody asked payment from Kishore Kumar, Kishore Kumar went to the bathroom, brought out a test tube, uh, uh, sorry, the uh, toothpaste tube, and pressed it to take out all the test paste, then he asked that fellow, please put it back in the toothpaste. I said, our situation is like that, you gave it to us, we, I cannot give it to you till my job is done. But we developed a new set of motion compensation algorithm. It is a, one of the, what I realized that a, everybody uses, you know, the support stabilization system, but a, we said, why to make complicated? We did the other way around. Mathematically, the flight track made it orthogonal to that antenna direction, and we made it, and you can look at the, the superb images, and I remember that day when I went for to Rangan to show him, and you know, he was holding a 23 crore budget for the initial uh, phase one development cost of RISAT. You know, the moment he saw the images, he threw that file and asked SK Das, our additional secretary, I, I have signed, get it cleared. That is how the ISRO used to function those days. And another interesting thing, you know, we are, we are the, our first, you know, before radar, we were asked to make radiometer a cheaper one. And uh, while making radiometer, you know, that's a radiometer has to be tested with a black body object. And you'll be surprised from J.C. Bose's day till 1998, not a single lab in India built a microwave black body radiator. And to our surprise, in fact, we were supposed to buy from UK Met, it is a eight and a half crores, and imagine the radiometer project was costing seven and a half crores. It went to Dr. George Joseph, who was the director. He called me, I was a mostly software and microwave guy. He put that file in the dustbin and said, you build it. And you know, it's surprising. And you later on I learned how to build it, get it productionized, and it was so heavy. And we built India's first black body operating in the microwave. And it is a cryogenic. It was operating up to 78 degree Kelvin, up to the bo boiling point of nitrogen. You know, oh, it, there is a, even in ISRO, and it is actually in India. A, anything, you know, Americans uh, had not done, then Indians cannot do. That is the general philosophy. You know, we go to buy armament, uh, we can have blame DRDO for many things, but say your equipment is not as good as IAI, or this is not as good as Rafael, it is not as good as this one, and it is everywhere. You know, 
everywhere is and that was an isro also some of that was an idea if you if nasa isa has done then we have a confidence to redo it and what i 99 i proposed the will build a radar synthetic aperture radar will be the better than the best and it will be built by brown people that is the last line i wrote in fact dr kasturi rangan got very irked on it on a three page note that it will be built by brown people and we kept it we made it the century of and we did a huge amount of you will be surprised that it has an electronics of approximately 1400 subsystems on a 6 by 2 meter antenna there was a 6000 connectors 3000 rf connectors 6000 digital connectors there is a 30 kilometer of cabling rf cabling and that was made and it worked flawlessly and its 90% components were commercial and made in india and in a facilities which were rejected by everybody including drdo what we brought first time we brought first time that the polarimetry in a C band, it is a first we change this polarimetry itself to hybrid polarimetry. It is a new concept which was introduced. And we also built a synthetic aperture radar first time in C band giving better than one meter resolution. In fact, I am happy to know, inform this one of our surgical strike, this radar was used for that operation. And they, and you know, and not only that, we built it, uh, the 10 kilometer by 100 kilometer spotlight SAR, where the global next best SAR was from the Israelis, which we bought from them, that had only 5 by 5 kilometer. You can see it is only one tenth of that image you can see on this comparison there. And, okay. And you can see the type of privileges it has come. And you know, they say PMs don't meet that actual person who is working, who made it. But at that time, our PM Manmohan Singh asked me to meet him. And to my surprise, compared to all the way he is, he was, a, a, I was stunned by his intelligence and his knowledge and his the wide spectrum. I, I was surprised why we are not seeing his that personality in public spaces. And he had a phenomenal memory, you know, it has still aged with me and his knowledge and his grasping ab ability. And we built also that our this next stage of reconnaissance satellites of RISAT 2B series. We have built a 2R in the operation, and they are helping our security friends in a much better way today. They don't have to depend on uh, other countries. And since I cannot show data from India, so I have showed it from Malaysia. You can see the intricate details, though it is put down in a very coarser resolution, but you can see the intricate details. And you know, that's a, we built the Chandrajan 2, it's a very interesting story, because uh, in Chandrajan 1, I wanted to make a synthetic aperture radar. In fact, I bid for it, for, on part of our team, and we could not get, because everybody said it has to be a foreign collaboration, and so be it, so it had happened. In Chandrayaan 2, automatically it would have gone to the, okay, that heritage to be, you know, the space people maintain heritage. So that heritage to be maintained, and the URA was the committee chairman. I was determined to get it. And the NASA proposal was in Elban, and uh, we went, you know, to ward me off. The, they had one radar was weighing 11.5 kg. So URA asked me, you make it two polarized, two frequency. I said, yes, L and S, okay. Then he said, it should be fully polarized. I said, the hardware will end up in four times. 
He said, yes, you have to make it four times. Then he, after thought, he said, to make it in 15 kg. I also said, yes. And he had no other way to go. He agreed for this. And I came back, I was almost leased by my colleagues, you know, two synthetic apertures for Chandrajan mission. We built it. And the last radar we built at 950 kg mass and 16.5 kg. And, you know, surprise of surprise, our colleagues, my colleagues, they rose to the occasion, built one of the most miniature synthetic aperture radar, and it is still operating. You can go to ISRO sites, how beautifully it has found out the craters, the water inside, and all of those things. I've known. But what interesting thing happened, you know, that NASA, at no time NASA chief visited India, ISRO. The reason is, you know, they, if you go, they will always say, we are 50 years ahead of you. Let us be very frank, let us not. And, you know, I was in the State Department in Washington, D.C., in one of the strategic dialogue meeting, and Charles Bolden, the NASA chief, he called, took me aside, you know, told them, Tappan, did you build that synthetic aperture radar at that cost? Actually, we built, built it less than 200 crores, whether the international cost was 2,000 crores plus. And I said, yes. Then he said, I'll visit. And he, after three months, he came, visited that lab, and walked up and down the clean room for one hour, and he wanted to understand what makes our people to build a, a, such a classic radar at a, such a cheap cost. And I would be surprised that they, they, all the radar set follow-on mission, which is called the radar set continuity mission, is deceptively similar to RISAT, and today, his features are copied in other synthetic aperture radar. In fact, I was the person who was invited to configure Canada's RCM mission. And the follow-up was that, follow-up fallout was there. There is an advanced LN S-band radar, which is coming in NISR, NASA, ISRO, SAR, which will be flying next year. And, you know, that's the most important thing. It will give information of every eight days, whole solid mass over the globe, that this, any height variation of two millimeter will be detected. And presently, as I told, I am on a mission to build a 32 satellite constellation of L and P band synthetic aperture radar. And uh, what will build is a, one of the topmost technology, which will be nobody's having at a one meter resolution in L band, which can, and it will penetrate through the ground and it will penetrate through the foliage and all. And uh, we have already made a, a drone based synthetic aperture radar. And you can see the type of images it has. And we have also got the IDEX challenge recently, the Prime Minister challenge we won. And it's a very prestigious win to support Indian Air Force. And, and we'll be providing the imaging services, which will give you not only see the surface through the foliage, it will see below the ground up to a 10 meter depth, it will see that. And also, we are making a very, very sophisticated, uh, it is nowhere there in the world, there's a very sophisticated GPR, which we tested in mines, where every piece of metal we could detect. We have a new concept. Uh, we are uh, upgrading it to drone bone one, which will be for military application, for mining, and all applications, and will give you resolutions of uh, less than a meter with a depth up to 80 meters. And, you know, we started operation hardly one, one year and three months, because after the COVID only we could start. We, we recruited people hardly for one year. And today we have come to the risk. And one good thing, it's a very deep tech. No VCs were ready to fund, you know. If you say you are going to make better than the best, nobody believes. Ah, aisa ho nahi sakta hai. paisa paani pe jayega. But then, you know, my... So there are much wiser classmates, my school classmates, who are wiser than me, so they made good amount of money. 
So they have invested, and that is how this company has come up. I just, my observation is true that they, you know, that say, ISRO, that China and India, where the per capita GDP was almost the same. And only the Deng Xiaoping started in 1984. And you see that after 10 years, their growth rate started increasing. And we started in 1994. And also another four years, 10 years, we also started going up. But what happened is subsequently, China's growth rate went very steep ahead. And it is India's has not picked up. We may all talk a lot of things, global thing. What I... My understanding is that China did not do one wise thing. They did not invest in software. And we went to build software, capture the software market, and because it's a high paying salary, and it just sucked away talents for all branches, all metallurgists, chemical engineers, civil engineers, electronic engineers, you tell a physicist, Mathematics, everybody wanted to become software. And not that, you know, with all due, it has generated a huge amount of employment, high quality employment, I have no doubt about it. And it has built the digital economy. Though many of this digital economy, significant part is made by the government software companies who pay the low salary. And, but it killed the core engineering and the stifled the deep tech engineering the price we are paying. What you seeing today, the government's approach, the correction of this process, and uh, by 2025, you know, we'll have a new economic order. That is what is expected. Corona, Ukraine war, Israel war, and all this is a process to us denormalization de denormalization of the present geopolitical and geoeconomic scenario, and that is where what the, see the government's effort in Atman Nibar et al. You, you will be surprised that China also started the similar program. Exactly what the programs we are doing. So this is all you will see. And I know another one, what is the difference with ISRO, my experience, is that our family, education, working everywhere, we started, you know, Insisting on, you know, independent thought, independent working, independent mindset. But what ISRO uh, has mastered, they have valued interdependence and which is a key to teamwork with a flawless precision. And this interdependence we have not taught in our industry. It is everywhere, you know, it is a my akelai raja, baki sab khaja. As I have. But that, that we can work together, we can have a different intellectual level can work together, different financial levels can work together, that has not been established there. And that is what made the big difference in success of ISRO and the, we do not see such matching success in even in the government funded or in the uh, private sector. One of the most important things what ISRO has mastered, you know, if you say the whole cosmos is governed by the second law of thermodynamics, even the life has come from the second law of thermodynamics. And I feel that a, any institution is also governed by the second law of thermodynamics. The most efficient institutions will have the least noise, least entropy, so they have the least information. So they, the most efficient organizations will not generate a new ideas because they have a least entropy and least information. And the most inefficient systems, like, you know, they say IITs or IISs, they generate a lot of entropy, but that they are not converted to proper informational product. But ISRO has mustered at different level to grab what is the new knowledge is created and converted to the product. So just to see, they say, we have started launching rockets of a such a poorer level, and from that we have multi went into all the branches of space technology, and that is possible because ISRO has put managerial levels at different levels to spot 
new type of knowledge created, new type of skill created, and that how to convert into new product. It is the most efficient Carnot cycle of thermodynamics we have established. And another thing, you know, if I put up this photograph, everybody knows it's the Varka. Mera pas ma hai, that story. But you, know, you will not know this person. He is actually Dr. S. Srinivasan, who is the father of today our cryo engine. And he has done a seminal work and he died very untimely death. Lot of issues were suspected, but then we do not know. The country which doesn't respect its knowledge, its people with knowledge cannot go. You, you see the difference in why we, everybody asks why we were delayed from US for 50 years, because our psychological and social priorities were different. And that, Another most important thing, if you see the ISRO, you know, has hardly today's date. Our catchment area is the small colleges, uh, 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 very far away places, the students are coming. And mostly it's the government engineering colleges, NITs, IISCR, or private engineering colleges. And surprisingly, we're performing much better than that. It doesn't mean that they, IITs are not contributing. It only means, it gives me satisfaction that our technology knowledge route has actually gone deeper, which are, we are not respecting and which we are not properly harnessing. That is my understanding. Oh, this is a poet, Bengali poetry from Neeraj Chakravarti. And you know, this, it says, have you stumbled on your way? Get up. When you stumble, you are noticed by a few. If you stand up again, you will be noticed by the whole world. So we should not get bogged down by the failure. Failure will have, you will have a very, good, very bad name sometimes. But if you from the rise from a, like a phoenix from a failure, and you will be respected very widely. This is many of the companies today, I see the startups from small failure, they jump, they throw out the things. And Okay, so I stop here and thank you for your kind attention. <laughs>